Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Saturday evening, September 12th. As always, the thoughts here are mine alone, and in making decisions, consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the best information. We continue to watch what are now three or four storms in the Atlantic, newly formed Tropical Storm Sally near southwest Florida, Tropical Storm Paulette southeast of Bermuda, Tropical Depression Rene, which is continuing to weaken, and new Tropical Depression 20, which is likely to intensify and move northwestward over the coming days. We're going to start off with what's closest to the United States here, Tropical Storm Sally. This is the zoomed in visible loop as the sun sets at the end. And we can see that the low level center is spinning right in here just to the west of Naples. And this remains a tilted vortex. We showed yesterday how the mid-level center was offset to the southeast, and that remains the case today. And the mid-level center is somewhere, somewhere down here where the convection is. The fact that we can see the low-level center here exposed away from the thunderstorms on the southeast side indicates that we still have just a little bit of northwestern or northwesterly shear present. We can see this on the radar imagery as well out of Key West. This is from Mark Nissenbaum's FSU site. And we can see the low-level center up here to the west of Naples. And you can see uh, maybe a little bit of mid-level rotation to its southeast in some of these deep thunderstorm clumps. And we need this vortex to become aligned before any significant intensification would be expected. And it's going to take a little bit of time still, given the appearance that it has tonight. And we have had tropical storm force winds and heavy rain across the Florida Keys in South Florida today. And that will continue throughout tonight on the east side as this moves off toward the northwest. If you look at the water vapor satellite picture, we'll see why uh, Sally remains tilted toward the southeast. We mentioned yesterday this upper low up by South Carolina and Georgia. This is continuing to impart just a little bit of a northwest flow across Florida here aloft, and it's just enough to nudge the convective activity of Sally off to the southeast side of where the surface center is. And that's going to continue for just a little bit longer. If we look at the GFS upper level flow forecast, initialized this afternoon at 2 p.m., we can see the upper level low here in these streamlines is the 250 millibar wind. And we can see Sally to the northwest of Naples here. And you can see this northwest flow uh, doing uh, that shearing that we saw on water vapor imagery. Now, as we go forward in time, this upper low is going to get nudged out of the way a little bit, due in part to Sally's convective activity, which tends to push it away with its uh, upper level outflow. And we'll see that eventually by Sunday afternoon, uh, that trough has now moved toward the north. And what we're left with is a Sally that is under now a light easterly wind aloft and not so much under the influence of that upper level low anymore. So what we would expect is that sometime tomorrow, what light shear is there is going to decrease and we will likely see better alignment of the vortex sometime tomorrow afternoon or tomorrow night. And exactly how quickly Sally becomes vertically aligned is critical for how strong it will ultimately get prior to its eventual landfall along the north Gulf Coast, which is expected to occur uh, sometime after the weekend. If we look at how the GFS shows this evolve, this is the mid-level relative humidity and flow plot, and the contours show you uh, the surface field. Uh, so this is where the surface low is, where the closed black contour is on the model, and then the wind barb show you where the mid-level center is just to its southeast. So we see that tilt that we also see in observational data. And as we go forward toward tomorrow, what we'll find is that on the model, the vortex remains tilted Sunday afternoon. Here's the surface low, here's the mid-level low. So it's still tilted eastward with height. And then by early Monday, still a little bit of tilt. You can still see that on Monday morning, surface lows here, mid-level lows here. So GFS doesn't really get rid of the tilt. Now it does eventually start to align a little bit better just before landfall near the Mississippi Delta, but very late in the game. And so at this point, the model does not allow enough time over water for Sally to become tremendously strong, although it is intensifying at landfall on this model run. We can contrast this with a more aggressive solution like the H-Wharf, which shows alignment 
that uh, is still tilted tomorrow. So we'll see that by Sunday morning, we still have this misalignment, but at some point Sunday night, after the shear decreases right here, late on Sunday night, we start to get alignment of the vortex after that shear dies down a little bit. And then we see very quick intensification on the model into a more, into a more significant hurricane moving toward the Mississippi Delta at this time. This kind of represents the bounding range of the solutions that are likely possible for Sally, uh, because again, the timing of when that a vortex alignment occurs is critical. In the H wharf, it occurs earlier and gives Sally a chance to intensify rapidly prior to landfall, which is very possible under generally light shear and over warm water. And the GFS takes much longer for Sally to align, which delays intensification until it's already running out of time over water. And so this means that there's a large sensitivity in exactly how strong the storm gets prior to landfall, but the ceiling is high. So folks should be preparing for a potentially significant hurricane impact to the central Gulf Coast here. If we look at the NHC official forecast, we can see this west-northwest movement uh, as the models have shown, now kind of narrowing down on more the Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama region on most of the modeling today. And just to give you another, uh, another insight into the steering forecast here, if we look at the GFS <clears throat> as Sally nears the coast, well, note that it's under kind of a broad ridge here aloft, and we do have a jet stream to the north that is now decreasing the uh, westward steering current for the storm. So while the low-level steering flow is out of the east, the mid-level flow starts turning more westerly. And this does two things here. One is that it, it decreases the westward steering flow across the depth of the troposphere and slows the storm down. The net steering gets very small once the storm nears landfall. And so we're going to be dealing with a storm that is moving quite slowly, and this causes tremendous problems, not only for estimating the timing of impacts to land, but also the duration of impacts to land will go up substantially. And this causes tremendous issues in terms of flooding and exposure to storm surge and wind impacts from Sally, regardless of what the exact intensity of the storm is. The other thing to note here is that the longer Sally waits to come ashore, it will eventually encounter a little bit of increasing shear from this westerly flow aloft as it reaches the coast. You'll see on the GFS here, it's kind of moving to more of a southwesterly flow as it reaches the coast. Some model runs suggest that this could uh, arrest any intensification trend that Sally has near the coastline, but this is not a particularly strong shear, and if Sally is a robust hurricane by the time it reaches the coast, it's possible that the shear won't be enough to disrupt the storm. So at this point, you probably have to assume that the storm will be intensifying at the time of landfall, unless we see something change here. So back to the official forecast, we can see that these dots get spaced in uh, much closer together as we near the coast, indicating that the forecast is for the storm to slow down tremendously. This is Monday afternoon, this is Tuesday afternoon, and Wednesday afternoon, and you can see how slowly it's moving over a period of two full days. This is again a problem because we're talking about a lot of potential rainfall and flash flooding just from the rain alone, not to mention exposure to wind and potential storm surge. And we do have a hurricane watch from the Mississippi through uh, the coastlines of southeast Louisiana, all of the Mississippi coastline and the Alabama coastline and a tropical storm watch east of that for the Florida panhandle. And of course the exact landfall point here can't necessarily pin down here two or three days in advance, uh, but uh, especially with the slow movement too, you know, we could see nudges to the right or the left uh, very easily when the storm is moving slowly and meandering like that. But regardless of this, a large area is likely to experience the potential for intense flooding, firstly from storm surge, where uh, again, this is a surge prone area of the Gulf Coast. And so any kind of storm moving like this is going to be pushing a lot of water on its eastern side out of the south and east toward the coastline. So we're already seeing values projected up to six to nine feet, and these may increase if Sally is predicted to be a stronger hurricane. Right now it's expected to have winds of about 85 miles per hour at a maximum prior to landfall. It's possible that it will get stronger than that, and if it does, these surge values would come up. And again, the rainfall is perhaps going to be the biggest issue with Sally, with tremendous amounts possible near and just east of the landfall point with the storm moving very slowly over the same region for potentially multiple days. We could see rain measured in feet 
rather than inches in some areas. We're seeing a 20 a 20 inch contour in dark purple there uh, near the Louisiana coastline and this is unlikely to be an encouraging forecast for many in this part of the Gulf Coast. So do be prepared and treat this as a serious situation. While Sally has kind of snuck up on us and developed kind of on top of Florida and it doesn't feel like it's been around for very long, this is quickly developing into a situation that you should take seriously and be preparing for as we could see significant impacts as soon as Monday based on this forecast. This is where it would be Monday afternoon. We would all already start seeing significant impacts to the coastline at that time. So again, exactly how strong this is, we have yet to see, but it's got a high ceiling. So treat it as if it's going to be a significant hurricane and be ready just in case. All right, we're going to move on from Sally and talk about the other storms. We also have another land threat here, Tropical Storm Paulette, that will be moving very close to the island of Bermuda, which is right here uh, very uh, soon, about Monday morning or so, or late Sunday night is when they will start getting impacts. And if we look at the zoomed in satellite picture of Sally, we're going to see the evolution of a storm that is now encountering less wind shear. It's been fighting wind shear for many days at this point. And finally today, we see that the low level center is no longer exposed and is now underneath some of this convection. Now, if you look, the mid-level center seems to be about here, but the low level center seems to be a little bit southeast of that. So there's still a little bit of tilt, still a little bit of south or southeasterly shear here. And this is confirmed by recon data, which shows that while the mid-level center seems to be here on satellite, the surface center was actually fixed there by the aircraft. Uh, we are still getting a reduction in the shear and the vortex tilt. And so we're likely to see Paulette facing more favorable conditions as time goes on now. We can see this upper low now cutting off and backing away. And so we are getting southeast upper flow over the system. Now we do have very dry air on this up shear side and some of that dry air is getting wrapped into the circulation, but overall conditions are improving for Paulette as that shear is going down. And so this dry air will become less of a problem as that shear decreases. And uh, this upper low is also serving to help pivot Paulette around before it's able to turn toward the north. And this is unfortunately what's bringing this very close to Bermuda uh, by the time we get toward Monday morning. If we look at the HWAR forecast uh, valid from this afternoon, we can see Paulette initialized here. And what we're gonna see is the intensification into a hurricane as this nears the island. There's Bermuda and you can see they receive a direct hit from the eyewall on this particular run. One thing I want to caution about here is this particular H-Wharf is weaker than some of the other uh, modeling we have seen and only shows a category one hurricane here. Part of that is because the eye is quite large. And if we go back to the beginning of the run, it thinks that the center of circulation is currently nearly 100 kilometers across. And if we look at the recon data, the plane that just went in there did not find a, a calm area in the center nearly that large, and it is much smaller. And the reason this matters is because a larger center might take longer to get stronger, and that would be good news. Here, it is a smaller center, so it might be able to intensify a little bit more than h -Wharf is showing in that particular run. And something a little stronger than a Category 1 hurricane is very possible here. Some good news is that it does seem to have a wind profile that extends quite far outward before decaying. And I won't go into details here, but that suggests that maybe it will have a hard time tightening up an eye over the next day or so. But it is likely to intensify regardless, and uh, we're expecting a Category 2 hurricane near the time of closest approach uh, to Bermuda, and it is going to be very close. Hurricane warning for the island early Monday morning or late Sunday night, and uh, that's when arrival is expected. NHC forecasting intensification through that time and a significant impact to the island is expected. So do be prepared and ready for that. It will turn northward afterwards and out into the middle of the Atlantic where it will cease to be a threat to land, even though it will likely be a powerful hurricane during that time. Okay, if we go back out to the large view, uh, that was Paulette, and we have Renee that we're not really talking about because it's rather weak and likely to dissipate at some point during the next few days. We've also been talking about uh, this new system that came off of Africa. This is now developed into a tropical depression, tropical depression 20 on the, uh, according to NHC this afternoon. And the reason for that is because we see a closed, well-defined circulation here with an area of low pressure that is now rotating vigorously enough to be called a tropical 
tropical depression. It is still attached in some ways to this large monsoonal region in general, and there's another lobe of vorticity up here, which may become its own storm and head off toward the northwest during the coming days. Now this one, we've had some trouble figuring out where it's going to ultimately go over the last few days as the situation has been uncertain, but we have a little bit more confidence today that this is likely to avoid the Lesser Antilles and the Caribbean. If we look at the GFS 500 millibar pattern here, we can see Tropical Depression 20, and there's Paulette to the northwest. And for the moment, it's getting steered westward by this ridge to the north, so we expect this to come west and likely to intensify under a favorable environment. But what happens is that eventually Paulette's going to leave after impacting Bermuda, and this ridge is going to shift north once Paulette leaves the region. So while TD20 moves west for a little while, now Paulette leaves, and we're going to see this ridge shift north and uh, TD20 is able to shift north as well because this ridge has now moved to a more northerly latitude and there's just not enough ridging here over this part of the Atlantic to direct a storm like this westward. And so we get something that starts recurving into the open ocean and is not a threat to land unless it somehow ends up close enough to Bermuda in the longer term. But this is already beyond a week out and we're not really sure where this is going to be at this time, but significant chances are that it remains out over the open ocean, which would be good news for everybody. So right now, this is what the five-day forecast from NHC shows, which is essentially that, a westward track for the next couple days, intensification into a hurricane, but then a bend toward the northwest toward the open Atlantic. So fortunately, not expected now to be an impact to the Eastern Caribbean. As we've seen modeling come in a better agreement today, uh, that this is now consolidated and not coming west far or coming west quick enough to make it to the Caribbean. It's going to turn before that now. So that's good news. Unfortunately, we have Paulette impacting Bermuda and Sally impacting the U.S. Gulf Coast, both potentially very significant impacts to these respective land areas. So do be prepared, get ready for these storms, and stay safe, everyone. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.